Good morning, heart and soul. Welcome to our Sunday celebration service. Today is Sunday, October the 3rd, and my name is Ron Marshall, and I'm a licensed practitioner and proud founding member of Heart and Soul. I'm delighted to welcome you this morning. I'm here to let you know about the ways that you can be engaged at Heart and Soul and to let you know of any immediate calls to action that we have coming up that you need to know about. Following our opportunities for engagement, we lead into our devotional time, and following our devotional time, we'll be leading into our inspirational service. We encourage you to visit our, heart, our website, heartsoulcenter.org. This is where you can find out more about becoming engaged in our weekly uh, book study of Emmett Fox around the world, excuse me, around the year with Emmett Fox. You can also find out where to get prayer and also how to get access to our podcasts. We also want to let you know that you can give by visiting our website. We do have an opportunity to give in community during our service, but you can give at any time by going to heartsoulcenter.org slash give. Join us this Wednesday for Imagining Justice, October, this Wednesday, October 26th for Imagining Justice, excuse me. This week we are exploring trust, projection versus curiosity with author and coach Rochelle Donegan. The experience begins at 6.15 with meditation. If you're interested in becoming a member at Heart and Soul, now is the time. Our path to membership is happening on Saturday, October the 23rd from 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Pacific. And you can register by visiting heartsoulcenter.org slash become dash a member. And since this, since this is the first Sunday of the month, we have the opportunity to hear from our prayer and care circle. And after our prayer and care segment, our devotional will be led by practitioner Dr. Felicia Williams-Cosey. Good morning, heart and soul. My name is Robert Williams. I'm a licensed practitioner, prayer facilitator, and a co-lead with our prayer and care ministry. And we are honored on the first Sunday of each month to come before you to share a little bit about who we are, what we do, how we can be contacted, and how we celebrate. We believe that there's a power for good in the universe and we can use it. We believe in the power of prayer and that prayer works. We are here to support you during times of transition, change, celebration, we offer laser prayer, confidential, short, focused, intentional prayer to support you in knowing the truth through any situation and to align with your intention for well-being. Prayer rooms are available every Sunday, 10 minutes after serving, as well as on Wednesday mornings at 7 a.m. Pacific time. We can also be reached online at prayercareheartsoulcenter.org and our Power of Prayer podcast that can be accessed through Spotify, Anchor, iTunes, or your favorite podcast platform. We are most excited to announce our new call-in prayer line, where you can call in your prayer request at any hour from any time zone, and a prayer facilitator will respond to your call within 24 hours. And one of the ways that we celebrate here at Heart and Soul is lifting up those who are celebrating birthdays in the month of October. So if you're celebrating your birthday this month of October, I offer you this gift from 365 Days of Richer Living by Ernest Holmes and Raymond Charles Barker. I am the perfect creation of a perfect God. And from heart and soul, we say to you, beloved, we know who you are. You are the beloved of God. And we celebrate your light. You are blessed this day with radiant health expanding abundance, loving relationships, and the wisdom, courage, and strength to be all that you are. We love you, we appreciate you, and we thank God for you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
Good morning. My name is Felicia Williams Cozy, and I am a proud member and licensed practitioner here at Heart and Soul. Today, I'm honored to be facilitating our devotional, the devotional segment of our service. Our devotional is our time to invoke our community vision together. Center ourselves by spending about five minutes in stillness and then anchor ourselves with prayer. Our vision statement is our opportunity to declare our intention in the world. It speaks to who we are and how we operate. So this is our time to recite and declare our intention together. So together we say, we are a loving and compassionate, world-class teaching and empowerment ministry. Through a consciousness of universal God presence, we release all resistance, separation, and fear. We claim our personal liberation and accept the eternal availability of joy, love, and abundance. Through our intention to be love and spread joy, we engender reflections of the same and more in others. Our ministry is a gift to the world, which expands through our practice and dedication. We welcome all people, and together we make a quantifiable, positive difference on the planet. And so it is. Beloveds, even as we have grounded ourselves in our vision, let us now take the opportunity to also ground ourselves in stillness. So wherever you are, I invite you to make yourself comfortable so that you might be open to divine guidance. Know that right where you are, God is, and therefore, it is a safe and sacred space. So if you are willing, I invite you to gently allow your eyelids to close and relax into this sacred moment. Join me in taking a deep, conscious breath. Let's breathe in together. And as you release with a sigh. Now give thanks for your breath as you gently allow it to return to its natural rhythm. Let your breath be an ever-present reminder of your oneness with spirit and its ever-availability as a guide and source of inner peace, love, and clarity, regardless of outer circumstances. As we enter the stillness, continue to focus on your breath and I offer this affirmation as our guide. I have been that I have been. I am that I am. And I will be what I will be simultaneously.
As we continue to allow the stillness to guide us inward, we pause to recognize the one life, the one spirit, the one love that is at the core of our being, that connects us all through time and space, that allows us to recognize that we are one with the one. And so as I recognize this as a good God day, it's a good God day because something woke me up this morning. Something gave each of us the idea to be present together from wherever we are in this moment. Oh, it's a good God day because we breathe, because we live because there's a desire in each of our hearts to be more, to allow more, to bring more forward together in this world. And so I know that as we allow the desires of our heart to be known, that everything that is necessary to bring those to fruition is already provided. And so I declare that this is a good God day to say yes. And as we say that yes, we give thanks for those who make this service possible. For those who got here early to open the doors in the building. For those who provide us with the audio visuals to be able to experience this right where we are. For our practitioners who pray without ceasing. For our prayer warriors who are there in time of need, in time of joy, in time of celebration. We give thanks for our ministers who hold the high watch for us even when we're not thinking about it. Oh, and we give thanks for our beloved Reverend Andriette for her continual yes, for her willingness to allow the truth to flow forward through her and as her. We give thanks and we lift her up. And knowing that this is a time of celebration, a time for us to allow spirit to speak in ways that each of us recognizes as our own. We say yes and we give thanks. And so I release this word into the activity of love and law, knowing that the law always responds, and love's answer is always yes. And so together we anchor this word by saying amen, ashe, and so it is. Good morning, heart and soul. Thank you, Felicia. Uh, I'm loving that w- the way that we have set our devotional time and that we have an opportunity. My prayer is that you get in early enough to have um, an experience of the devotional as well. You know, um, on this adventure in faith, at least on my adventure in faith, Somewhere very close to 20 years ago, someone told me, uh, because I was certainly delivering sermons before I was licensed as a um, Centers for Spiritual Living minister, but someone told me, and I didn't fully understand it then, I just, you know, heard it and we kind of chuckled about it, that I was a serial preacher. And now I get it, because... It's very much the way I learn, and so it's the way that I teach, the way I facilitate, the way that I train. And on this adventure in faith that is heart and soul and our Sunday celebration, my prayer is that we, 
in the words of my sister Iyanla, that we lay Velcro, that we have the divine availability in our minds, and I'm going to say in our souls, because it's about mental and emotional and certainly the spiritual presence that then determines the body of our affairs, so that if we are, if there's something that we're doing at heart and soul, something in the message, in the repetitive nature of the message that supports us in velcroing divine idea, divine principle, in a way where it just, it sticks for us. And for those who are just coming in for the first time, that there would be something that gets your attention enough that you could hang out and likewise apply Velcro so that some of these divine ideas can be hooked. Because you know that's what the Velcro is. It's the little hooks that connect in a way so that these ideas and the way that you're thinking and the way that you're being can be hooked in an aligned way so that we experience the divine transformation that is forever possible for us. So, serial preacher that I am, let's begin with Philippians 2 and 5. Y'all know, have this mind in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Why? Because it's done unto us as we believe. That is a process of mind activity. It's discerning. We're using our mind activity always to determine, to set the mental equivalent. And once a mental equivalent is set, we are guaranteed that a physical that an effect is, is born out of that. It is done unto us as we believe. It's done unto us as we are thunking. And I'm saying thunking because it's, it's beyond thinking. I, I, I want to impress upon our consciousness, our conscious awareness, that it's not just our casual thoughts. You know, in the world, we're often, someone says something, you're saying, oh, I thought that too. But when, where, more than once, this is our, this life-changing, life-transformation idea that I'm presenting forever, always, is based on our consistent thinking. It's the, the weight of our thinking. I'm going to call it thunking because you'll remember that in some way. That will break the mold of it simply being a thought that wafted in and wafted out. And you believing that having any erroneous idea that just having had that waif of a thought was transformative in your life. It is not. It must be that the, that the weight of the, that there be um, a critical mass of your thinking directed in a particular way gets a particular outcome. So it behooves us to have this mind in us. One of the things that we can see in the master teacher, Yeshua, that the, that the world ultimately came to call Jesus is a consistency. There's not a moment where we're... And in fact, for theologians, they're often reading and they know that something that is attributed is not consistent with the word as, as they have studied it. You know, across translations, that it's not consistent with the culture. It's not consistent with what is, what is held as being known. And, and, and as I'm saying this, you, you, it's a bit problematic because none of the folks that we're reading in terms of theology, none of the theologians were there then. So it's, it's all, but that doesn't mean we can't discern it. It just means that some of that discernment we must do ourselves. That some of it is up to us that we can't just Google everything, that we can't, that, 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 that we can't sub out everything, that some of it is for us to know ourselves. 
So there's something about our divine nature, the divine connectivity that we are and that we have that we're responsible for recognizing that we're responsible for knowing that we are the divine manifest in human form. And, and that we are no way, nowhere close to expressing the divine in total. There's just no way that even if we all gathered together on our best day, doing our best work, we are still, there's no way for us to exhaust the divine by any expression. Because it's everything, everywhere, always present. So where we think we have used it up, and sometimes our very home training and the, the, the community and churches and the way that we were socialized and, and religiosidized, I made that up. Um, it, but it's the impress on our thinking and the building of our character. We were often taught to small change God. We were taught to see it in its smallest common denominator and to often compare it or see it through a filter of humanity. If my father did, then I'm, I'm designing the divine out of that male figure in my life, or not in my life. And then as I broaden my perspective and I realize that it is, that there's no male-female in God. It's not like there's a male God and there's a female God, that there, it's either all there is or it isn't. So it has to contain all of that. It is the very source of creation. There is no way to create stuff where you don't have the all everything that's required for creation. Ernest Holmes says, we wrestle not against outward things, but against inward ideas. And what are inward ideas but our thoughts? Our thoughts, it all is an inside job. He says, the power of darkness is the power of false belief and superstition. Now, in the world, this is often called the enemy, the devil, Satan. What is it but the power of a false belief, a belief in duality, that there is good and very good, and some will say, well, if there's good, there's got to be bad. And so there's a whole model that's built out of that idea. That if there's good, there's bad. What do we, often in the vernacular, we're looking for the other shoe to drop. If there's a good one, a bad one, you're not going to get to ride to good for too long. Because sure enough, there's going to be, oh, we made all that up. We made all that up because we're trying to define and describe the divine in our human terms and not even our best human terms. You know, we're designing in, for our purposes, for our personal purposes, because there's no, we don't need to design the divine. It already is. But for our, purpose, our personal purposes, we have. And we have managed to shrink it down to a size that we could, to bite size, so that we can kind of fit it in our mouth. Because in truth, there is no way to describe the divine. And if we are trying to describe it, we know we, have, oh, we are only talking about the aspects that we can conjure up, which has nothing to do with. That is very true with what we see in the world as we talk about ethnicities. And we hit on some aspect and that becomes the whole of it. We look at certain regions or neighborhoods and we'd have to have sense enough to know that whatever we say about it could not be the whole story and yet we speak about it just like it is the entire story that neighborhood is that really every house every person the entire neighborhood the entire state 
And now, oh, I'm trying to stay on the talk. Because <laughs> you can see all the tangential places. Oh, we have. <sighs> Ernest Holmes says, if a human can change his or her, now you know I'm editing Ernest Holmes because I just feel that the gender presence representation is important here. That if a human can change his or her current concept, his or her whole life will be changed. Y'all know some of us are engaged in change, your thinking, change your life, and can I just go on record and say lives are changing? Because why are thinking... Our thinking is changing. And there's, once you, once you cut a groove in your thinking, and you have already, by the way, this isn't a new idea. Most of the grooves we've cut have been unconscious, which means we just heard something and like, that cut a groove because we heard it a lot. Women. <laughs> so many grooves are cut in our consciousness, just when I say the word women, something has already come up. And if I say black women, Lord, the grooves are just, you, you understand what I'm saying here? So it's not necessarily that anyone has done research on women and that any of the grooves are, that are cut in our consciousness have anything to do with truth but they have everything to do with the lives we're living and what we believe about women, what we believe about God, what we believe about children, what we believe about elders, what we believe about community, what we believe about ourselves. Each one, not in a collective view, but each one, what do I believe about me? And in truth, it's not a secret. Whether I consciously know, my living reveals what I believe about me. And your living reveals what you believe about you, by the way. I know we think we, like, that's undercover and don't nobody know. I'm working it out. But your living reveals what you believe. All cause is from within all effect is forever without. All cause is from within. You know, we, we, we bandy about cause and effect. The way a thing begins, the way the thing is expressed. We know that the beginning is always an inside job. And the effect is always just a part of it. And temporary, by the way. Because as you continue to think, unless that's your last thought ever on this plane. But if you have another thought, it's possible that the effect then changes. Do y'all understand what I'm saying here? That every thought is powerful, especially intentional thought, conscious intentional thought, where you're thinking it with an intention of transforming your experience. Yes? Oh, I'm trying to tell you. Deepak Chopra says that nothing out there, remember all cause, is an inside job. He says nothing out there, no person, not your mama, not your daddy, not big mama and them. Nothing. No situation, no problem, no predicament. There is, I'm sorry, is there. None of that is there for any purpose other than to guide you to where your soul wants to go. And you need to know your soul wants to go someplace. Or it would, or this would be its last breath. If you draw another breath right now, and my sense is you are, then there's a purpose for you. Your soul's purpose is it must be to, do more, to be and do more than you've been being and doing. Because there's no, not in a greed kind of way. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
But if we're still here, it means there's more for us to do, more for us to be. If I, every Sunday I show up, I know there's more for me to be and do right here, wherever I am. Now, you know, this is not, I need, I need to remind you, this is not a mountaintop teaching. I don't just slide in from the outer realm and, you know, bring my vibration down to the level of humanity and then come in here on a Sunday and share something. It's just me working it out all the time. That's what happens. What's different is that I somehow managed to do it on mic. And that just, that, that boggles my mind all the time. Why I choose my living and my growth and my coming to myself to be now on camera and on mic. I don't know. But it's apparently what where my soul wants to go. It's my being obedient. I think if you know me and you know my heart, you know my spirit, there's a piece of this that is not my conscious mind choosing. This isn't, this isn't kind of my fun. It is because I am obedient to it and I now live in the discovery of what is the divine going, how will my vocal cords be engaged? How will my spirit be in service to the divine in my waking moments? So the opportunity is for us to consciously align ourselves such that we live and love in a holy way. It, because the holy way would be one of deference. Can, can you feel that? It would be one of, of letting go of my agenda, the, what I want to do, because it would look very different. My life would be very different if I just did, quote, what I want to do. And Lord, I'm so grateful that that's not what I do. Oh, Lord. So this idea is to be in deference and be receptive to divine guidance. Ricky Byers wrote a song, a chant, if you will. Holy, holy way. Let me love, let me live in a holy, holy way. And this is Donnie Lee singing that selection. Let me love, let me love in a holy, holy way. your hands today. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. Let me love, let me love in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. Let me love, let me love in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me know that love is all around me. Let me know, let me know that love is That love is all around me. Let me know, let me know that love is all around me. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me live in a holy, holy way. Let me live, let me live. Let me learn, let me learn from all the ways I fall. Oh, let me know that love can heal us all. Let me know, let me know that love can heal us all. Yes, let me know that love can heal us all. Let me know, let me know that love can heal us all.
Let me serve, let me serve in a holy, holy way. Let me share the good that's overflowing. Let me share, let me share the good that's overflowing. And let me care for those around the world. Let me care, let me care for those oh, around oh, the world. Oh, oh, oh. That's overflowing. Let me share, let me share the good that's overflowing. Oh, let my steps reveal the path of peace. Let yeah. my steps, let my steps reveal the path of peace. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, let me talk each day a little kinder. Let me talk, let me talk each day a little kinder. Ooh, let me was Donnie Lee from CSL Southern Nevada. Thank you for that. Let me live in a holy, holy way. What that provides us is in Romans 12 and 2, it provides us a way to not be conformed of this world. The, that is the way it's written in the King James translation. But in the Aramaic Bible for plain English, it says, do not imitate this world. So between either, I, I mean, I don't care where you land, the idea is to not get attached to the effect, but to be transformed, what? By the renewing of your mind. So the, I'm trying to lay some track here so that you can, you can get a sense of, because often the question is, I hear you, but, but how? How do, I, how do I make that shift? Well, live in a holy, holy way. Now, let's be clear what I'm saying. Live in a holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, holy, holy, whole, from the word whole, holy, and then holy way. So it's whole, holy, all the way of my living is holy. Now, I'm just doing this as like some sign, but living holy really is not like this. <laughs> living holy is eyes open. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Living holy is, all, is it more in a Serena Williams position. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, that's more than living holy. That's being, being ready for life, being available for all of it, knowing that right where I am, the whole perfect and complete nature of the divine is, so come on with it. Yes. So although I will do this because we very commonly, I just want you to get that the real position is, I mean, if you're going to assume the holy position, it's one of readiness. It's one of, 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 of enthusiasm, spirit within. It's one of, it's a leaning forward. It's a divine availability because we know it's all good. Even, whether we like it or not, <laughs> we know it's all good ultimately. <sighs> so this notion of being transformed by the, the, the Aramaic says, by the renovation of your mind. <laughs> You're going to have to move something around. 
You know, I'm an HGTV fan. So you're going to have to move some stuff out. <laughs> you, you hear me? Some stuff going to have to go. <laughs> That's one of the first things that happens in the renovation. You're going to have to let something go. And I don't know that transformed by the renewing of your mind makes that clear. But that's why I want to bring you both, because when you get the word renovation, I know you know you cannot renovate with the same stuff. Something has to be removed. And, you know, they come in in there on that demo day <laughs> and just start tearing stuff up. So I don't know, but it could be in your renovation. They're going to have to tear, you're going to have to tear some stuff up and get it out. Just have a truck back up and cart that off. Metaphorically, you see what I'm saying? I don't know that it's just going to be moving this from here to there. Because we don't call that renovation. The renovation I'm talking about that starts out with the demo work. Ooh. See, I want you, I, I want you, see, that's like a little Velcro moment for your Romans 12 and 2, where you begin to see, what is this telling me? What is it offering me? It's saying you're going to have to change. And the change may well be drastic. You know, often in Scripture, the, the characters get new names. Why? Because the names symbolize nature. And when your nature changes, your name changes. And so you may have to, you may be renovating in, to such an extent that you need a new name. I'm just saying. And I don't care if anybody else, it may not be a name you publicize. Because I don't know about you, but I grew up calling myself by my own name, my little self-talk. And I don't mean grew up as a child, grew up spiritually with another name because I realized that I had another voice. And it was a critical voice. And I, when, once I became aware of it, I no longer wanted to see it as me. Because I knew it wasn't going to be here long. And so I called it by another name because it was a different nature than the nature that I'm claiming for my life and my living. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but it worked for me in my life. As for me in my life, it worked. So look, Ernest Holmes says this about this very scripture. He says that, that the renewing of the mind is a scientific act as the conscious thought pours truth into the subjective channels of creative energy, the body is automatically renewed. Now, that's true about the physical body, but that's not necessarily the body we're talking about. It's the body of your affairs. Body really represents metaphysically the form. Because in truth, you not you. I mean, you, your body isn't you. Our bodies are simply the form, the form that, that spirit is expressing. He says mental healing is a conscious act as well as an established fact. In the experience of many people, instead of the old concepts of disease and failure, we are to inject those of liberty, freedom, Health, harmony, and success. That's our work. Our work is to, is to interject because what? We're renewing the mind. So you're renovating your mind and what you put, the newness you bring in after that demolition work, now you got space for it. Because what we just took out a wall <laughs> that was just in the way of the flow. You see, I've been really watching now. So that wall was in the way of the flow. <laughs> but now we're using it metaphysically. And there's some walls that we have in mind that are in the way of the flow. And some of that flow is health and well-being. We have some ideas about health and well-being that have to do with age, that have to do with gender, that have to do with, with uh, social status. So there's some walls we have 
that we need to that we could benefit from demolishing what so we can increase the flow some of the walls have to do with our financial prosperity our prosperity quotient there's some letting go there's some demolition that is beneficial so what we can renovate we can put in the ideas that are going to be productive and in alignment with the outcomes that we want. We know that everything produces something because what this is a creative universe. But the question is, see, sometimes we miss it because we don't think we created that. We just, that's the stuff we don't know how that got there, remember? You know, when it's the good stuff, the parking place we wanted, oh, I was all about that. Look at the... Look at what I created. When it's something else, we don't know how that got here. I don't know, I don't know what happened because I'm creative, but only on the good tip. I only create the stuff I want. The other stuff in my life, I don't know how that got here. And when I say it, you get how foolish that is. You, you get that that's you. You just, you thinking to yourself, I'm going to cut that out. That that's not going to be the way I'm going to show up in the world. Believing in the foolishness. There really is divine order, and it doesn't cut on and off based on what you like. It just is. Ernest Holm goes on to say, mental healing is subject to the exact laws, the exact laws of mind and spirit, and is accomplished by correct knowing. Not the foolishness. By correct knowing. This knowing is a mental attitude toward truth. It is the truth which makes free, and it is the mind which knows the truth. See, sometimes we don't link that up. We have to string these pearls really carefully here. It is the truth that makes free, but it is the mind that must know that truth, or, there is, or that free we just talked about isn't. It's not experienced until the mind knows that truth. You know, sometimes we, and I understand it, we've been told these things, but nobody took the time to just support us in breaking it down in a way that we could embrace it and Velcro it in our consciousness. And so we have what, we, it's almost become just platitudes, just stuff we say. The truth will make you free. Talk to me about that. When, how, under what circumstances? Oh, there's got to be some engagement. The renovation of mind around what is true. Ooh, the body is healed, Ernest Holmes says, as the inner mind is transformed. Look at the order of that. The body is healed. As the inner mind is transformed. Not after you just say some affirmations a few times. Not after you get some prayer a few times. The body is healed as the inner mind is transformed. Now, for some people, that could be one prayer. That could be an affirmation on the mirror that they, that, that, but what, it's not where it is and if it's on a three by five card or typed on a sheet of paper, that's irrelevant. It's, it, has it transformed your mind? Has it transformed your thinking, the way you see your situation, your body temple, and your relationship with the divine as it is expressing as your body temple? Come on now. The order is that the body is healed as the mind is transformed. As that shift takes place in mind, it takes place in body, not before. As the old and false images of thoughts are renewed, are renovated by the images of truth and life. What are we holding? What pictures are we holding? Yup. Mm. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I've had just enough birthdays to be vulnerable to the discourse on aging. I have to tell you, I thought I was immune. 
immune. That had nothing to do with me. I know better. That has nothing to do. It had just enough birthdays, though, so I'm like, huh? <laughs> I'm tuning into a frequency that never interested me before. And so this is essential for me. I'm telling you, this is not a mountaintop teaching. I'm aware that in that renovation, I don't want to end up with no ageism hanging in the new drapery design or in the new little alcove for aging. Uh Uh-uh. But I must be aware. I have to stay conscious and aware because what? It's everywhere. You know, I'm a boomer. And then more of us as a group. And so the advertising that I never paid no attention to, it's now targeting me. And I want to make sure that my renovation is not capturing that. Because I can feel that I have some susceptibility to it. But that's my, you know, I can't go out there and say, take that off, TV. And take that off the billboard. See, now they have people who look like me. And it makes it more, before, you understand what I'm saying? Before they didn't look like me, I wasn't paying them no attention. (laughs) But now it's my peer group. It's designed for me. But I have to know something in order for it not to become me. The process through which this renewing takes place is a conscious one and may be practiced by anyone who understands the principle involved. That's what I was just describing to you. Ernest Holmes is describing what I'm working through in my life. Father, Mother, God, Lord. I never thought I'd be sharing Stephen Colbert with y'all from from the late show. I just didn't know there'd be a Sunday. (laughs) I didn't know there was a Sunday where Stephen Colbert would be making an appearance at Heart and Soul. Well, today's the day because he said this, and this, I want to challenge us. Why? Because we're renovating. We're renovating, and I want us to challenge ourselves. He said, if this is going to be a Christian nation that doesn't help the poor, either we have to pretend that the master teacher was just as we are, Or we've got to acknowledge that he commanded us to love the poor and serve the needy without condition. And then admit that we simply don't want to do that. And I'm like, well, you better ask somebody, Stephen Colbert. Because that right there is truth spoken. And what did we just say? The truth will set you free if your mind recognizes the truth. And so we've set up a pretense that we just going to be Christian without being Christian. You know, so I'm going to be it like a, the TV show called Christian, but I'm not going to be it. I'm not going to have the heart. I'm not going to have the Christ heart because that's the root of that, not as religiosity, But as a spiritual way of being is what I'm talking about. The Christ consciousness. And that, you know where I'm going. I'm going right back to Luke 6, where the master teacher specifically said, why are you calling me Lord and all that, bowing down and carrying on, wanting to be where I am, if you're not going to do whatever I say? And if I say, take care of the children and the elders, the poor are always going to be with you. And so you're going to have to, You're going to have to help. And if you're not willing to do that, then why are you acting like you are aligned with the teaching? Why are you acting like you're with me? And it becomes important. I know y'all know this by now, but there's a thing. This is a, well, it became funny to me. Somehow in my In my growing up, I heard a story that I believed in my hearing of it that it was actually in the scripture. And in this story, it had a man outside the gates of Sodom and Gomorrah. 
And as anyone would come and come or go, he was busy telling them, don't go in there and just preaching. He was just that little sidewalk preacher right there about their salvation. Just don't do it. Don't don't get hooked in. Do not get caught up in all that's going on in there. Just, just don't save yourself. And he was there day and night. And finally, somebody came to him. This is the way the story came to me. It came to him and said, you, why are you bothering with this? You, hear all, you are putting in a lot of energy that's not changing a thing. Clearly, you know, you see him going in, coming and going. They continue, same ones. You must know you're not changing them. And the man said, I'm not here to change them. I'm not trying to change them at all. I'm trying to make sure they don't change me. And I often, I don't know where I heard it, but I know I searched (laughs) believing that it was a scripture that had just been told to me as a Bible story. It's good enough that they ought to put it in but it's not there. But often, it, it was such, see, the mind has to recognize truth. This was a part of my freedom work, was my recognition that often my work is to make sure that I'm not changed. You know, like I'm, I'm talking to you about the ageism, to make sure that all of that that's out there, to help me with pains I don't even have yet. You heard me say yet? I got work to do. See, just that yet is an impress on my consciousness. Because in truth, I'm about to correct that, that I don't have an intention of including that. But part of the, part of the, the uh, social commentary is that I should expect it. And you see, part of my consciousness was right there in a willingness to, ha- to declare I don't have it yet, which means I must be expect. There's some level of expectation of it. So there's work for me to do. It's a wonder I don't just say, somebody else take over now because I got to go. <laughs> because this is that moment where I just know that uh, there's some inner work to be done. And fortunately, I'm at the end of the talk anyhow. Because otherwise, I might need to just, you know, cut it off short. But I, I just want to reinforce just really quickly that the rest of this scripture, Luke 6, 46, is where I always start to say, why are you calling me? Why are you acting like I'm your teacher if you're not learning nothing? That's, my, that's the Andriette version of the scripture. You know, but that's essentially what it's saying. Why you call me your teacher if you're not learning nothing? Because teaching and learning are linked. But then he teaches this so brilliantly that we're forever laying the foundation. The foundation for our living, for our being free. That there's, there's a foundation that is the mental equivalent of freedom. And there's a foundation that's the mental equivalent of bondage. And so he's saying that once you understand that it's about the the renovation of your thinking and that you're forever laying a foundation, when you put those together, you want to be conscious about the foundation you're laying. Where are you laying it? Before the service began, we we were playing Whitney Houston. I go to The Rock. When it isn't working, that song is about I know where to go when it's not working. I want to offer a new idea. Just live there. Just set up your consciousness, your house, build your house, build your consciousness, set your house on the rock. Don't just go there when it gets rough. (laughs) Don't just run (laughs) when stuff is down. And not working the way you need it to work or when you're terrified. Often, I know that's when you call your practitioner and won't speak to the minister and all that. I'm talking about in the meantime, how about you be on the rock? How about we begin to work it out as a continuous process? How about if we're just willing to, to let go? How about if we're willing to let the spirit run our lives, if you will. How about if we're willing to release the stuff that is holding up the renovation? 
how about if we were simply willing to release and let go and allow our heart to open wide to know that each and every one of us, let me just declare for me, that I'm only here for God. Donnie Lee singing Ricky Byers, I Release. Put your hands together. Whoa. Mm -hmm. I release and I let go. I let the spirit from my life. When my heart is open wide, yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for all sin. I release and I let go. I let the spirit from my life. When my heart is open wide, yes, I'm only here for God. Oh, no more. No, no more strife with my Solars around the world. This is Reverend Angelo. Yeah, this is the body that goes with the voice. And, you know, every week 
I try to break me off a little something from the talk that I can carry with me that will sustain me all week long. And this week, I got it for sure. Let me live in a holy, holy way. Let me live in a place that is beyond appearances, beyond the effect, knowing that I am being transformed by the renewing of my mind. This is deep, deep spiritual truth. And it's not just true for me. It's true for all of us. And it is certainly true where gracious giving is concerned, which is really what I'm up here to talk about. And here's what I want us to know. This is our opportunity to go even deeper and to really let our giving be evidence that we're willing to be renewed around prosperity and abundance, not just for Heart and Soul Center of Light, but for ourselves, because how we do anything is how everything gets touched. We have lots of ways in which you can graciously give to Heart and Soul Center of Light. You can send a check to our secure mailing address at 5627 Telegraph Avenue, number 405, Oakland, California, 94609. Or if you prefer, you can give online at our website at heartsoulcenter.org slash give. And while you're there, you may even decide that you want to set up recurring giving, meaning you identify an amount you want to give and a timing that you want to give automatically without you having to do a thing. That's available for you on our website. And last but not least, you can actually just text the word give in your smartphone at 510 500 5849, and a delightful app will take you through that experience. My favorite way of giving, you may like it too, but whatever way you choose to give is right and perfect. It's also important that we maintain the right and perfect consciousness for our giving. At Heart and Soul, we have a tradition of blessing our good before it is given, thereby establishing an intention for the good that our gift will do in the world. Wherever you may be in the world, I invite you to take your gift in hand and maybe just place it over your heart or otherwise just place your hand over your heart and let us say our blessing together. I bless this gift as healing energy and send it into the divine flow of all good. Infinite prosperity circulates through me, through my church, and throughout the world, because I know God as source, and so it is. And now it's my pleasure to welcome back to the pulpit, her pulpit, our own beloved Reverend Dr. Andriette Earle. Thank you, Revelo. Thank you for that. Uh, just also huge thank you for Donnie Lee out of uh, CSL Southern Nevada for being our musical inspiration today. And just a huge thanks for our virtual team, for the folks uh, part of the love streaming, the sound, just all everything. I can't even begin to name a number, all of the different roles. I simply am grateful because it's when it all comes together, including our welcome circle, um, which is present on site and doing whatever needs to be done so that we are ready to receive folks when we open uh, our hospitality circle, Bottom line, I see you, I love you, and I thank God for you. Thank you very, very much. I want to remind you that Imagining Justice is, is uh, back and doing stuff. And so on this Wednesday, the focus, their theme is trust, and this focus this Wednesday is projection versus curiosity with Rochelle Donegan, Arthur, and Coach. And um, I want to, and then you can see on the screen yourself that for the next two weeks, what is missing is the final Wednesday of this month, of October, where there will not be an imagining justice. So there's just for the first, second, and third Wednesdays um, that they'll be, and then they'll be back in November. Um, also, path to membership. 
If you are interested, come be a part of this session. It's from 8.30 to 3 p.m. There will be a lunch break. In order for you to um, get credit for this, if you will, to complete the course, you must be there for the entire time. So it's Saturday, October 23rd, and that's our path to membership experience. And it's all about if you are interested, Come be in the mix so that you can learn what is the difference between just hanging out at Heart and Soul, having a good time, doing what you do, and being a member, which is also hanging out at Heart and Soul, having a good time. And there is the mutual responsibility and connectivity between being a member of Heart and Soul and Heart and Soul acknowledging that you are a member and that we're in this together. So come check that out. All you have to do is go to heartsoulcenter.org slash become a member and register or find more information about that. And so now I just ask that you center yourselves in whatever that means to you. For many people, it means allowing their eyelids to close. It means maybe if you're lying down, you might sit up. If you're sitting up, it might mean you'd lie down. You might, I don't know what it means for you. Whatever it means, be in that readiness and that state of receptivity and divine availability. And just begin by being aware of your breathing. Even as I breathe now, I am grateful that I recognize that I'm not just breathing, I am breathing the breath of God. I recognize that I'm not just breathing the breath of God, the breath of God is breathing me. The living one, the strong one is breathing me and I am breathing the breath of the living one, the strong one. That something is happening here. There's an interconnectedness. There's a divine oneness that I am experiencing in my awareness. The truth sets me free as I on as I recognize and honor the truth. And the truth is that I'm being breathed. I'm not just breathing, I am being breathed. I am not just living, I am living the life of God, and the life of God is living me. I'm being lived. Oh, what a blessing. What a blessing. It is in this awareness that I recognize in the words of Ernest Holmes, the voice of truth, that I recognize that the voice of truth speaks to me and through me. That I realize the voice of truth guides me and keeps me on the path of the perfect day. Perfect for me. Perfect for whatever it is that I'm to realize, to learn, to experience. Whatever is required for my expanded awareness. And I declare that I listen to the inner voice and allow it to tell me what to do, not just in the hour of need, but as I draw every breath into my beingness. I declare that I am told everything I ought to know for all of my needs. That my awareness expands as is required. So not only am I being breathed and being lived, I'm being thought. I'm being expanded from the inside out. And my awareness, I know and I know that I know that I shall never be misled by the divine, by divine guidance. I know and declare that the voice of truth cannot lie, but always speaks to me from the highest vibration that I can discern. Not the highest vibration that is, but the highest vibration that I can discern. 
I know and I know that I know that nothing enters my consciousness but this voice. And that this voice is the voice of the divine, the living one, the strong one. And for this, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for this awareness. I'm grateful for knowing that the living one, the strong one, speaks to me, speaks through me, speaks as me. Oh, I'm so grateful. Grateful for heart and soul. Grateful for this opportunity to share this morning. Grateful for the divine transformation, the renovation of my mind. Grateful for divine life unflowing. Grateful for the power in releasing and letting go. Grateful for the certainty in welcoming truth and light and love. So it is an absolute perfect gratitude that I release this word, that I turbocharge it into the perfect activity of law, that I know that it's done and done perfectly well. And so I simply let it be. I seal this by saying, Ashe, Amen. And so it is. Love matters. Love